Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Chrome on Air webinar on single sign-on identity and access. My name is Daniel Kane. I'm a partner success engineer at Google. Um, if you're listening live and have any questions, please submit them below, and we'll do our best to answer them during the session. The agenda for this webinar is as follows. I will give a quick introduction to the different identity options available on Chrome OS. We will look at SAM OSSO in more detail, outlining the architecture and authentication flow, and stepping through configure, configuring SAM OSSO in the Google Admin Console. To wrap up, we will look at some watch points to keep in mind when deploying Chrome Enterprise with SAM OSSO, and quickly touch on some upcoming improvements to the implementation. Chrome Enterprise provides a number of different options for businesses to authenticate their users onto Chrome OS devices. The first option is using Google Identity. If the customer has already deployed Google Identity either to use G Suite or other Google Cloud services, then the, these same credentials can be used to log into Chromebooks. And this is an ideal solution for customers who have already moved to the cloud. Often customers will continue to use an existing Active Directory or LDAP service as a source of truth for user details and will sync identities to Google Identity using Google Cloud Directory Sync. When using Google Identity, passwords are stored in the cloud and customers have the option of leveraging Google's two-step verification solution. The next option customers have is to use federated login, specifically SAML single sign-on. This is by far the most common scenario we encounter when working with large businesses and in education. With this setup, Google Cloud Directory Sync is commonly used to sync identities from the identity provider to Google. However, passwords are managed at the identity provider and not by Google Identity. One nice benefit of this configuration is that once authenticated, the user has a SAML cookie on their device, which can be used to automatically log them into other services which are using the same identity solution. Another option available to enterprise customers is direct Microsoft Active Directory integration. With this setup, the user authenticates with their Active Directory username and password. The enter credentials are checked directly against AD. There is no need for a SAML identity provider to be configured. We usually see customers opting for this solution during Chrome pilots and testing. In production environments, we would encourage customers to move towards federation if possible. Then the final option is to choose not to identify the users at the device level. Um, Chrome Enterprise supports managed guest sessions and with managed guests, uh, the user can quickly start a session on the device and get straight into the browser and their apps. This is particularly useful in shared use cases or where users do not have a corporate identity or potentially even are not a member of staff. Think client kiosks as an example. While the user is not asked to log onto the Chrome device, they may need to authenticate into a website or an application in session. Um, and with managed guest session, the user's information is wiped when they log out, making the device safe for, for the next user. Okay, so let's take a closer look then at managed guest sessions. So as I touched on, managed guest sessions are particularly well suited to spaces where Identity is not required, such as a shared back office device in retail, um, client kiosks in banks, or information portals in hotel lobbies. The device can be securely shared between users as no data is stored on the device, and it's wiped each time the user logs out. Managed guest sessions still allow administrators to control the user experience, and pages can be set to load in startup, bookmark, bookmarks can be pushed, sites can be blocked, and apps and extensions can be automatically installed. The session can also be branded using the avatar and wallpaper settings and custom terms conditions can be presented to the user prior to sign on. For the remainder of this webinar, we're going to focus on federation using SAML single sign on. But before we get into the detail, let's quickly run th through some terminology. So firstly, federation um, is using a single identity for multiple applications. SSO is short for single sign on. SAML is short for Security Assertion Markup Language and is an implementation of, of single sign-on. An identity provider or an IDP is your single sign-on endpoint. So there's many vendors in the space. Um, and then a service provider or an SP is the application that you're accessing. So in this case, G Suite, your Chromebooks, it could be other SaaS solutions like Salesforce as an example. 
And then your user data store is where your credentials are stored. So your user's um, account name, username, and password. So now let's take a look at the SSO architecture. So the diagram on the right of this slide shows the infrastructure. Everything on the left of the diagram is running on-premise at the customer's site. The right-hand side of the diagram is Google infrastructure. In this example, we're using Active Directory as our identity authority, and Active Directory Federation Services will be our SAML IDP. And we're also using Google Cloud Directory Sync to synchronize identities to Google Cloud. User credentials are, are managed in Active Directory. Um, all updates for joiners, movers, leavers, they continue to be managed here in Active Directory. Google Cloud Directory Sync is then configured to synchronize any changes made in AD to Google Cloud Identity. And this is a one-way sync from Active Directory to Google. So GCDS never writes anything to Active Directory. So step one and two are actually the same if you're planning to use Google Cloud Identity or if you're implementing SAML single sign-on. Um, at this point, your users have a Google account, which has been created through the GCDS sync. Um, if you were using Google Identity, you would also need to set a password for the user. So this can be done in the Google Admin Console. Um, and users will be then prompted to sign into their Chromebooks using the standard Google Identity flow. Once the Google identities exist, then these same accounts can be used to sign into other Google services. So things like G Suite and Google Cloud Platform Services, if these have been enabled and configured by the administrator. In this particular case, we're looking at SAML SSO. So we need to configure the IDP in the Google Admin Console. We'll look at the specific steps to do this soon, but at a high level, we need to provide the endpoint for the identity provider, in this case, ADFS, and turn on SSO for Chrome users. We can also redirect Manage Chrome OS devices to the ADFS login page. And then with all of this configured, when the user wants to authenticate, they are directed to the ADFS login page where they will continue to log in. And we'll, we're going to step through that flow next. So again, this slide should look familiar. The diagram on the right-hand side shows all of the same components, but this time we're going to step through the SAML SSO authentication flow. Again, we're assuming Active Directory is the identity provider and ADFS is providing the SAML um, IDP. When the customer purchases a new Chrome device, they enroll it into their management. And then this ties the device to the customer's domain and ensures that device policy that has been configured in the admin console uh, gets applied to the device. The Chrome device receives the login URL as part of this device policy, and it's instructed to re redirect users to the ADFS login page to authenticate. When the user then tries to log in, the credentials are checked against Active Directory. If the credentials are correct, the user is passed a SAML cookie, which will contain the user's Google identity, and this is checked against Google servers. And once the user has successfully logged in, the credentials are stored securely on the device. This allows for future offline logins, and the, administer, the administrator can control how often the user must log in through the IDP. Now that we have a high level understanding of how SAML SSO works on Chrome Enterprise, let's take a few minutes to walk through how it's configured on the Google Admin Console. The first step is to configure a single sign-on from the security section. This enables single sign-on for all users in your domain with the exception of super admins. Um, your super admins will continue to use the standard Google identity flow, and this is to ensure that you do not lose access to your admin console if the IDP is configured incorrectly or if it were to go down. Note that by setting up this, your users will be redirected to your IDP to log into Google services such as G Suite on every device. This is not just for Chrome OS. The next step is to enable single sign-on for users signing into Chrome devices. This is configured at Device Management, Chrome, User and Browser Settings. Um, and as this is a user setting, you need to ensure that you're configuring it on an OU that contains your users. So there's two settings that you need to configure on the screen. So the first one is single sign-on, and this should be set to enable SAML-based single sign-on for Chrome devices. The second setting is single sign-on online logon frequency, and this controls how often the user is forced to sign in via your IDP. 
um, as opposed to doing an offline sign-in locally on the device. So the default here is two weeks, but as an administrator, you can make that more frequent. Moving on to the device settings, there are three policies to consider here. Um, as these are device policies, you need to ensure that you're configuring them on an OU that contains devices. Starting from the bottom of this screenshot, the first policy we need to consider is single sign-on cookie behavior. This setting controls if the SAML cookie generated when the user signs onto the device is available to other apps and websites inside the session. If this is enabled, then the user will be automatically logged into other services that use the same IDP. If it's not enabled, the user will need to re-enter their credentials the first time that they visit another service that uses the same IDP. The setting above this single sign-on IDP redirection controls if enrolled devices should, should bring users directly to the IDP login page. Um, if this is not configured, the user will be presented with the standard Google login flow. Uh, once they've entered their username, they will then get redirected to the IDP. So enabling this setting saves the user from needing to enter their username twice. And then the setting at the top of the screenshot, the sign-in screen setting, controls if the user is presented with the option to quickly log back into a user profile they've previously used on the device. Uh, with this enabled, the user just clicks on the username and photo and is prompted to enter their password. This is an offline login. They're not being forced through the IDP at this point. With this setting disabled, the default flow is to always hit the IDP for, for authentication. So once SAML SSO has been configured to use ADFS at the login, the login flow will look like this. The user is presented with a message explaining that the device is managed. Once they click on the next button, they're redirected to the ADFS login screen. If the user needs to change their password in session, they can navigate to the Google Identity Security page. And by clicking on the password option, they'll be redirected to the SAML password change page. Again, this will be presented by their IDP. There are some watch points that should be considered when you're configuring SAML SSO. And um, firstly, only one SAML IDP can be configured for the domain. It's not possible to have different IDPs for different groups of users. And um, as explained earlier, super admins are not forced through SSO. And um, so that is something to be aware of. Then by default, users are only forced through the IDP login every two weeks. And um, as I've touched on, this can be adjusted using the single sign-on online login frequency policy and also the sign-in screen policy can be used to control the default login flow. Another couple of watch points are around passwords. So when the user changes their password, either because they've been forced to do so due to policy or because they've perhaps contacted the help desk and asked for a password reset, the next time that they want to log in on their Chromebook, they're going to be asked to enter their old password in addition to the, the new password. The old password has been used to decrypt the Chrome profile on the device before it's re-encrypted with the new password. So that's just one to be aware of. And then also, if you do have a policy to for passwords to expire, say every 60 days or 90 days, the user will not get an alert that their password is due to expire on Chrome OS. And then just to touch on some recent updates and upcoming improvements to this flow, um, in Q3 2019, we added the ability to use Google's two-step verification and risk-based login challenges with a third-party IDP. So this means that you can authenticate your users using your existing IDP and then prompt them to use a one-time passcode. Um, th there's no integration between your existing IDP and Google. Um, you, you just set up both services and the two-step verification will be will be presented to the user once they've passed your, your IDP authentication. And then throughout 2020, we're working on improvements to the password change flow and the in-session alerts when the Active Directory password is due to expire. Thank you for taking the time to attend this session. If you have any further questions that we've not answered, please email them to chromeonair at google.com. And please remember that you can register for upcoming webinars, including our session on admin console overview and best practice on July 23rd at chromeonair.withgoogle.com.